Hi, so today I'm just going to show you this robot we've made using Manu Systems CMS platform for our RDO2 drive kit here. Uh, you can see the RDO2, that's the wheels, the brackets, the motors, and of course the MD25 installed in there. Uh, for power, for the whole thing, we've got a 1.2 ampere hour SLA battery in the middle there, and that's all connected up using one of our fused on off and charge brackets. Now that can be used for powering the robot, but when it's not in use, it can also be used to recharge the battery again. And if I turn him round and look at the front here, you'll see we've got one of our robo spine boards installed. Now, all the sensors on the robot connect directly to the robo spine board, which collects all the sensor information, and then using this Bluetooth dongle here, communicates it back to controlling PC software. So all the behaviours of the robot are actually controlled via a PC and just communicated back to the device using Bluetooth here. Now connected to the robo spine board at the moment we've got eight SRF01 rangefinders here they're connected in these white sockets on this side and also round on this side as well. Um, in the front we've got a TPA thermal sensor connected directly to the board and on top here on this platform you can see we've got a Compass 10 installed. Uh, the reason the Compass 10 is on the platform there is just to keep it away from the magnetic interference of the metalwork of the robot body itself and also from the motors as well which apply quite a lot of magnetic interference. Um, so yeah that's all the stuff on the robot now I'll just show you the PC software that's used to control it. So this is the software that's used to control the robo spine board not only does it read back all the data from the sensors that are attached to it, but it will also control the logic that makes the robot run around the room. So to start that, you just need to select your Bluetooth modules COM port from this drop down box, and when comms become active, all the information will be displayed on the screen for you. So I'll just talk you through some of this information. The boxes here at the top are a representation of the temperatures being read back by the TPA E1. The bottom row of numbers here are the minimum temperatures of each pixel read back over a period of time and the top numbers across here are the actual temperatures being read back by that pixel. The box in the middle is a representation of how much above the minimum temperature that the actual temperature is. So if I run my hand across its field of vision you'll see it appear as a hotspot. Next we've got the SRF01s on the left hand side of the screen. You'll be able to see the status of the transducer's lock bit for each rangefinder, the software value of each rangefinder and also the range being returned. Underneath that you've got the information for the Compass 10, so the bearing, the pitch, the roll and its software version. And on the right hand side of the screen you've got the information coming back from the MD25. That's both motors encoder values, both motors current draw, the battery voltage, and also the MD25 software version. Underneath that, there are readings for two A to D converters. Any analog devices can be connected up to these, such as a sharp infrared rangefinder. Now, in the middle, you'll see a visual representation of the space around your robot and the orientation of your robot within that space. The circle in the middle is your robot and the arrow points to which way your robot is facing and the ring around that represents the distance of objects from your robot according to the rangefinders listed here. Lastly there's a box down here in the bottom corner labelled behaviour. That will show you the current behaviour that your robot is running. So you can see at the moment it's running a behavior called cruise which makes it just run in a straight line but if I put an obstacle in its way you can now see it's avoiding to the left. Now that we've seen the software running let's have a look at the robot running around the room. What we'll demonstrate now is the robot's anti-canyon behavior. The robot will detect a consecutive series of avoid left and avoid right behaviours and then triggers the escape behaviour which reverses the robot out of a corner 
turns the robot to face the widest free area and moves in that direction. This is the robot's bump detect behaviour. It uses the current draw of both motors to detect when an object has struck the robot below the field of view of the sensors. Here the robot can be seen navigating terrain in the corner of a room. Objects at a far distance will trigger a pull towards behaviour, which will pull the robot towards the object. And once close enough, the robot will trigger a push away routine, which pushes the robot away from the object. This can cause the robot to follow the outline of the walls of a room. Once free from the corner, the robot will go into cruise mode, which will hold the robot straight using the compass bearing. Here the robot will use all of its push, pull and avoid behaviours to navigate itself around a confined area.